So in this video we're going to use stoichiometry to determine a limiting reactant. So let's just use the same chemical equation we've been using before. It's the Haber process. Um, and this is uh, there's hydrogen gas, H2. I combine that with nitrogen gas, which is N2. Oops, that's N2 gas. And then when we combine these two reactants, the product that we get is ammonia. That's NH3. And that's a gas. Okay, so there we go, and so we'll just balance this equation. Uh, we put a 2 here and a 3 here to balance it. Okay, so now the problem is we want to use stoichiometry to determine the limiting reactant. So let's just give some some arbitrary numbers here. Let's say we have, oh, I don't know, let's say we have 150 grams of nitrogen gas. Oops, let's just write that like this. Equals 150 grams. Okay. And we have, let's say we have 50 grams of hydrogen gas. 50 grams of hydrogen gas. Okay. So what we're doing here, um, we have 150 grams of nitrogen gas. We have 50 grams of hydrogen gas. And we want to determine which reactant is the limiting reactant. And uh, so let's just figure that out first. And then we can figure out how much ammonia we can produce after that. So it doesn't matter which one we pick. We can pick either one. So let's just grab one. It doesn't matter. Let's take let's take uh, hydrogen gas here. It's the first one. So we know that we have 50 grams of hydrogen gas, H2. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to switch this into moles of hydrogen gas. So we multiply it. Well, it's molar mass, uh, or the molecular weight of hydrogen. We're just going to round again. Remember that one hydrogen would be uh, one gram, and or sorry, one mole of hydrogen would be one gram, and so one mole of diatomic hydrogen gas would be two, two grams. So we'll write that here. We have two grams of H2 and one mole of H2. Okay, that's great. So now what we want to do is we have moles of H2. Um, and we want to switch into moles of nitrogen. And if you're remembering, we'll just cancel out the grams here and grams here. So now our units are in moles of hydrogen. Okay, so now what we want to do, we want to switch to moles of nitrogen. So we'll multiply by the mole ratio. Um, so we have hydrogen on the top, so we put hydrogen on the bottom, like this, hydrogen gas. Uh, that's the three moles, three moles. And we have one mole of nitrogen gas on the top. Right, that's just the, the stoichiometric ratios here. So that's N2. All right, so then we have moles of hydrogen and moles of hydrogen, so those can cancel out. And now our units are, well, now our units, I guess, those are gone too. So our units are in moles of nitrogen gas. And the last thing we want to do here is we want to convert moles into its um, into grams, into molecular weight, or using molecular weight. So we put, again, moles of N2 on the bottom. And so for one mole of nitrogen gas, um, well, there's two nitrogens, and we're, we're going to round these each to 14 grams per mole, so we get 28 grams um, of nitrogen gas. Okay, so look at this. Then we have moles of nitrogen and moles of nitrogen, so those cancel out. And so now we can put our final answer in grams of nitrogen gas. And what do we have? Well, we'll have 50. Um, we have 50 times 28 and then divided by 2, and then divided by 3. And so you just punch that in your calculator, that comes out to 233 grams of nitrogen gas. Okay, so let's stop here and let's think about what this means. Well, the, what this is saying is we combine these with the stoichiometric coefficients and ratios. So what this means is that 50 grams of hydrogen gas can react fully with 233 grams of nitrogen gas. Okay, so wait, what does this mean? Let's go back to the original equation here. We said we had 50 grams of hydrogen gas reacting with 150 grams of nitrogen gas. Well, down here we say that 50 grams of hydrogen gas can fully react with 233 grams of nitrogen gas, but we only have 150 grams. So that means that, to, let's say that to use up all this 50 grams of hydrogen gas, we would need 233 grams of nitrogen to use up all of the hydrogen, but we only have 150. So what that means is that if we're using less, the less than the full amount that it requires, we can't use this full amount to fully react. So we're going to get some amount, um, you know, of hydrogen, 
some amount that's less than this 50 grams that's reacting with this 150 grams. So basically what that means is that this reaction is just going to stop once all of the nitrogen is used up, um, which is going to leave us an excess of hydrogen with, you know, with just nothing to react with. It's just going to be floating around. So we'll, at the end of this, we'll have, you know, essentially, if you think about it this way, we would have some ammonia and we just have extra hydrogen gas because it wasn't able to fully react because there wasn't enough nitrogen to react with it. So because of that, nitrogen in this in this problem is the limiting reactant uh, because it runs out first so um, let's just uh, let's roll over the next video just to make sure we don't take too long here so if you just click here um, click here okay perfect so just click this box and uh, we will take you to the next video and we will just find out what the maximum mass of the product is that we can get by using this limiting reactant